the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you for the Holy Spirit thank you. that is within us who, are, who believe in you. Mm. We thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, dear Father. Yes. This is a demonstration of your love for all of mankind. And we have yet to just fully understand what it's all about, but we thank you, dear Father, that you continue to give us these days whereas we can cultivate that relationship with you by your grace by your grace it is so mm. and we thank you father that your love is unconditional and that uh, in spite of the faults that we have when we uh, have done all kinds of, of manners of things against your will you still love us because you know how how broken uh, we are yes and you know what sin has done to us yes. but yet and still you love us mm. you, you did that through a sacrifice that that only you yourself could have could have handled yes and we thank you dear jesus for that mm. we thank you that knowing what you were going to to go through that you obeyed the will of the father <laughs> and as a result we have this relationship this direct relationship with him and so we thank you so much, dear Jesus. And we not only just move when we do communion service, but we thank you always, always in everything it is that we do. Help us to grow stronger in our faith, yes. in our endurance and in our in our stamina. Yes. So that we can demonstrate to others what the wonderful things that you have done for us in saving our souls. That we may have a wonderful relationship with God the Father forever and ever and ever. Holy Spirit, continue to guide us and direct us. Uh, put put the right words in our mouth, the right thoughts in our minds. Yes. Help us to, to show the right actions so that we can be that light Come on. that you want us to be in this world. Yes. And Father, I ask lastly that even though there will be challenges, we know this, that in the face of those challenges, that we demonstrate that spiritual courage that you would want us to demonstrate yeah. and showing all that we belong to you. And we say these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. So yeah, so that, so, so uh, Bishop, I was, we we're gonna, we're starting, I think you saw the, uh, the slide. Uh, well, just some of these are just recommendations. They're not they're not laws or anything like that. But the whole focus is, you know, ask, and that's that the community. I think that's prayer basically. Pray to God to to hear and ask Him that you want to hear. Uh, obviously, everything we do is in faith. Uh, just to live by faith, right? <laughs> so we we want to operate by faith. Uh, the other piece of critical piece is to listen. And, and one of the things I, I want to bring up is there's always the uh, competing voices that we have out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you know, that's right. Yeah, look, unfortunately, because some of those competing voices appeals to our flesh, uh, a lot of cases our flesh would uh, take heed to those competing voices. And we have to be able to, I think that's why the Bible talks about being spiritually minded opposed to being cardinally minded because you can almost tell what's appealing to your flesh matter of fact you can, right. you, you can even hear those competing voices and see a lot of them going against the will of God uh, for your life and for other people as well uh, and then I think another thing to keep that as far as you getting out of the way is, is, is that shut up to listen to hear him uh, talking to you because like I said conversation we were talking about even Thursday conversation is we give each person opportunity to speak and not try to speak over uh, one another so that, that that that's important to be able to, to be quiet and listen 
with the intent mm -hmm. that's what you're trying to do so you're being quiet uh and then like i said uh put your relationship with god in the proper uh role which i say is the father it's a relationship it's a parent relationship god is your father god is our father that's why he jesus taught us our father which are in heaven you know uh and i know one time we said in the book that 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 lord's prayer was an old testament prayer but in reality the old testament saints didn't call god the father uh but jesus was teaching his saint his disciples pray our father which are in heaven mm -hmm. the scripture obviously we matter of fact when you left i think uh that last time you was here one of the, the the concern was some people think it was trying to get off of the scriptures you know as not being relevant or or, or secondary right <laughs> and we're saying there's no when nobody was saying that at least that's not what this is what i was trying to say the scriptures are and i think i think you were there when we talked about it is it's a it's a record of god talking interacting with man right because we got a lot of things in the scriptures we got a lot of characters in the scriptures and some of those characters were doing good things doing right things some of those characters were doing bad things uh some of those characters questioned god some of those questions some of those characters were obedient to god so it's the scriptures are records that we can use as a foundation uh to 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 interact with god so the scriptures are very important we can never uh, dismiss that so mm -hmm. using the scriptures also to balance what you're hearing from God, if you you know, making sure I'm hearing from God, because it's interesting. The devil and all those other competing forces will also try to talk to you, but if it doesn't line up with God's will, then obviously that 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 becomes an issue, right? Uh, right. So and then and then confirmation. That that's that's that's. I was a confirmation is more like the fact that you heard from God. Then you move on and do the obedience of God, and then I think God, God, you can either go to a fellow saint to to talk about what you heard from God, but I I believe just just go, and and God will confirm His word, just like anything else. He'll confirm His words to you uh, if you need confirmation, and He'll use anybody. I don't think I don't think it matters, right? It's just a confirmation of knowing what you get. And and yeah. I like you know this one is interesting. Person brought up is to write down when you get a chance. Just like you know we do Bible study, right? You know you take notes sometimes, right? And mm -hmm. it's, it's to, to write down what you heard from God, if it's a, if it's an instruction that's long or or complex, <laughs> write it down. It's almost like a vision statement there, right? God mm -hmm. said do this, you know. Uh, some people put down there, there's an additional notes they had in there, where, uh, be where God is. I, obviously, God is everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, there's no question about that. I think some people talking about is trying to get into a, that quiet place where, you know, where you can hear from God and not be distracted by other things, right? Uh, okay. you, you can hear from God. You go to a chapel. You go to your sanctuary. You go to your private place at your home. I think I, think, I like that part we talked about. Sometimes you go in your prayer closet, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah! You know, now it's like, no, no, this is this is all about shutting everything else out, and I'm I want to hear, be led, fellowship with God. Amen. Amen. So, so, so having a place where you go, sometimes is is, is well, it's it's very critical. But I I, I don't want I want to put a caveat on there and say. If Enoch walked, the testimony with Enoch is he walked with God. Huh? That means uh -huh. I, I want to get into it. I think we want to try to develop a relationship of hearing the voice of God is by him being with you <laughs> everywhere you go. You know, Amen. we had that old plant where those saying about God is like co, co, uh, co pilot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, reality, he's supposed to be the pilot. You, you, you're the co pilot. And, and therefore, everywhere you go, you want to have that communication as much as possible. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But I mean, he's there whether you like it or not. He's there. Amen? Roger that. And then listen to your conscience. You know that you're in a voice. You're in with man. Uh, just to make sure you and him line up uh, with the will of God. And, and I think even with Jesus, when he had to talk in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
You know, he asks three times, right? Because sometimes mm -hmm. we, you, so, somebody was one, la, last Sunday, uh, I think it was Brother Addison, where, you know, some people's taught is that it ain't faith if you don't do what God tells you to do when you first heard him say it, right? Mm -hmm. Or when you're praying mm -hmm. for something and, and that, that you, you ask again in that prayer. You know, you pray again. Uh, mm -hmm. about that instead of saying by faith I receive I ask for it I receive it and I move on the reality uh, it's not at least not a scriptural place to go ask God again <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. as often as you feel comfortable with it right mm -hmm. so you can ask again by faith until you receive it I think that's the key to receiving what the spirit is saying and matter of fact one of the things that you you won't hear before and, and bishop put in there you know when god said by his stripes you heal right or when god says to, in the scriptures uh like for peter go walk on water right mm -hmm. uh and then somebody said well if it's in the scriptures then then i should be able to do it too but what we realize is that the scriptures aren't real until it comes real to you you know what i mean it has to be did you hear god tell you that you're healed in other words you have to receive what the word says to you it becomes mm -hmm. personal to you it's 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 live to you it has a it's power toward in your life you know that's what we want to make the scriptures is god is to you know when you hear by stripes i'm healed or well, the fact is that I'm saved. It's, it becomes real to you. It doesn't even matter. You know, when you get to that conviction is, somebody asks you, are you saved? I'm saved. How do you know you're saved? Because I received it. But I heard from God. I received God accepting me as my as a child of God. I'm not, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to even try to, I don't care about whether you accept that or not. It's him telling me who I am. I'm a child of God by faith in him. See, you know what I'm saying? It becomes real to you. And that's what we want to get that relationship is, I hear from God because I heard him. I heard him. I don't care whether you heard him or not, because it wasn't for you, it was for me. That was, you see what I'm saying is? Even the same thing with the scriptures. The scriptures have become real to you. So he's talking mm -hmm. to you. And, and that was very good. And that's one of the things Bishop brought up last week and um, a week ago last is it has to be real to you god has mm -hmm. to be real to you and, and that's why we wanted to uh put that in perspective the other yeah, thing yeah yeah huh? oh, go, go ahead i'll just bring up the scriptures go ahead you know i was just going to say and one thing um as, as i'm listening to you and i was looking at your list uh one of the things that i think we should be mindful of is that when we are listening to God and feeling spiritually what God is saying, you know, we got to be careful that uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that what God wants for us lines up with our emotions. Yes. Um, because our emotion, uh, emotions oftentimes are going to be about what our flesh desires. Yes. And not what God desires. Right. So we can and and that's why when we can be joyful in the spirit come on now. but we can be sorrowful in the flesh we can be mournful in the flesh we can be hurt in the flesh mm. but what we do is we recognize that uh, what is ahead uh -huh. what god is doing for us during those trials tribulations uh hiccups whatever we want to call them that uh you know that's the joy before us mm. you know yes and uh and like so <laughs> even then you know we are listening because <clears throat> for instance if i if i know i want to do one thing mm. but the the spirit of the lord convicts me yes sir and i know i need to do something else come on now you see my emotions might say <laughs> but this you know i want to go to the right <laughs> but he's saying no i need you to go left and that matter of fact i need you to go specifically in this direction to the left not more than that not less than that you see what i'm saying <laughs> yes sir yes, so sir. so again you know we uh we hear him 
in all kinds of ways. Wow. All kinds of ways. Yes, Amen. sir. Yes, sir. It, I like that though, that the being able to once again is I think that was dealing with that conscious part is to mm -hmm. making sure that it is 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 his will that's appealing, not your flesh of uh being the guy, you know, especially with carnality, right? Uh, and, right. and and I know that I know that I think one thing I wanted to kind of bring up was the fact is when we cut sometimes we want to be uh, we kind of slip into being legalistic uh, toward the things of God and, mm -hmm. and we want to thump based on that right meaning when I mean thumping means we want to try to convict somebody else condemn somebody else treat somebody else based on the things we got for the scriptures. And not hearing that is that still the will of God, especially when you're talking about the Old Testament. This is not a legal, God does not want this to be a legal document for you. If only document gave you to, Bishop, if you think about it, I'm saying this we can't go by the law, we can't treat it as the law. It's we got to treat it as guidance from God, right? Meaning mm -hmm. is that we get so legalistic sometimes, we'll start condemning people judging people and treating people based on our own concept of judgment and saying you you didn't you didn't follow the law so i'm gonna treat you a certain way you know and i'm talking about from <laughs> dealing with somebody that's an adulterer or or somebody that is a liar how do we treat them you know do we do we do do we justify our actions of negative talking and thinking toward them because of their behavior or do we still love them and try to minister as long as they want to hear the will of God, the word of God? But do we go into this condemnation? Because they're not, you know, you, you how, how better, better term is an uh, example of bishop is when somebody sitting and say, well, you baptized, you didn't get baptized in our church. So, so we, you know, we're not, you, you're not, you're not, you're not really saved. You know, you could, you didn't do it our way you know mm -hmm. uh how many times we hit you and i we dealt with some guy came in one time and said that you gotta get baptized in the name of jesus you know and that says the scripture said the name of jesus the scripture also said the name of the father son and the holy ghost the guy said well that is jesus name okay got you so so you you feel that you we have to do it if somebody said it that way they're wrong and it, it, but they gotta say it this way and then, then they were getting into now, okay, you never got saved yet until you get baptized the right way. So what that means then? So I'm not saved. And, and I, thought, I thought the scripture said, you know, those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? Right. In the John right. 16. Uh, <laughs> so all that all that goes out of wonder because we never get into technicality. Mm-hmm. And that's what so that's one of the things sometimes people get thrown off because we get into technicality. Opposed to understanding is the Bible told us the only thing we're supposed to do is love one another. And then the other piece is go preach the gospel, right? 